Ladies and gentlemen, cue the circus music. Wait, nothing's playing. Oh, I'm sorry. This is real life. Supreme Court gives Native Americans jurisdiction over eastern half of Oklahoma. That's right. If you live in Tulsa, according to the Supreme Court, you are now under the jurisdiction of the Muscogee Nation and that the state has no right to prosecute you for crimes. Ted Cruz said that SCOTUS literally just gave away half of Oklahoma. Boy, (laughs) if there was going to be some kind of civil war, I'd imagine this would be a major catalyst for it. Basically, what happened is the Supreme Court heard an argument that a violent criminal who was arrested in 1997, convicted, he argued, you can't prosecute me because this is Native American territory going back to 1866. And now we've got an official ruling finally in the year 2020. It was a five to four decision. And they said, you know what? Yes, half of Oklahoma was never properly established as Oklahoma, and it's still the Muscogee Nation. Native Americans now have full jurisdiction over this, sending shockwaves through many other states. I'm not joking. It's literally happening. As Ted Cruz puts it again, the Supreme Supreme Court just gave half the state away. Listen, I understand the history of this nation, conquering lands, taking over uh, territory, westward expansion and all that stuff. And you can be critical of it, but these things have happened. To now reverse hundreds of years of precedent and development and economic expansion of America because imprecise language. Now, I'm sorry, man. Look, what you know, I, I saw I saw a tweet the other day that from the outside, it looks like America is falling apart. Maybe that's what this is, because let me now tell you what comes next. You see, under this precedent that this territory was never properly established as an American state, and it is still a Native American nation. You have to realize there's many other Native American nations that were conquered by colonists and by early American settlers that we now just consider to be part of America, but will in fact no longer arguably be part of these states. I actually have a map of Native American territories, nations, which may fall under this. Now, I'm not a legal expert, I've talked to, I've reached out to some people. No one really knows where we go from here. The fear now is that there's over 1,700 convicted criminals in, say, Tulsa, the second largest city in the state, an American city that do not fall under the jurisdiction of the state. But they do fall under the jurisdiction of the Muscogee Nation and the federal government, which means these people released because their convictions will not be upheld if the state does not have jurisdiction. I got to say, man, I don't think the people who live there are in Oklahoma anymore based on this ruling. There's no higher court in the Supreme Court. There it is. You live in Tulsa. You live in eastern Oklahoma. Congratulations. You're on Native American territory now. And they set their own rules. Justice Alito said something to the effect of imagine people waking up to find out they're no longer under the jurisdiction of Oklahoma, but of the Native American reservation. Yeah, they're going to have new rules for you. I wonder what this means. I I don't know. I don't know. But I got to say, I laughed for a long time. They say, you know, Trump says there's a cultural revolution occurring, that there's a far left that seeks to destroy this country and overturn and things like that. And the media will tell you it's not happening. Well, apparently it's even in the Supreme Court. And here you go. Here we go, man. We have set the stage for a wave of suits of Native Americans now reclaiming long since lost territories. And why not? Why not? Supreme Court said so, right? Now, you can argue that this is America. It's conquered land for over several hundred years. Supreme Court disagrees. Even with Donald Trump appointing his justices, this is the path we are heading down. Now, some people have pointed out, you know, maybe Trump will intervene to some capacity. Maybe. Maybe Presidential Directive 51 kicks in and Trump says, no way can we allow the Supreme Court to give away (laughs) state jurisdiction. Well, let's let's read this and see what they're talking about. And, and we can only speculate, I suppose. Before we get started, make sure you head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give. There's a P.O. box if you want to send stuff. The best thing you can do is share this uh, share this video. I'm sorry, man. I'm just going to laugh about this because this seems like the most shocking ruling I've ever seen in my life. And uh, yeah, some people are pretty pessimistic about where we go from here, but Seems like, hey, maybe the American empire can't last forever, huh? 
Well, surprisingly, when I tweeted this out, didn't seem like a lot of people understood the ramifications of this, nor did they care. If you think I do a good job in discussing these issues, I'm going to read the story. Then please consider sharing this. Although I'm not sure it'll matter at some point. We'll see. But uh, if you just want to watch, hit the like button, the subscribe button, the notification bell. Let's read the story from USA Today. Supreme Court gives Native Americans jurisdiction over eastern half of Oklahoma. The Supreme Court ruled Thursday that the eastern half of Oklahoma can be considered Native American territory. A decision the state warned could create civil, criminal, and regu- regulatory turmoil. The 5-4 to four decision was written by Associate Justice Neil Gorsuch, who joined the, uh, the court's four liberal justices. The justices considered the issue for the second time after failing to decide a different case last year when Gorsuch, Gorsuch whatever, was recused and the court likely deadlocked. The case concerned an appeal from Jimmy McGirt, a Native American who claimed his state conviction from 1997 should be overturned because Oklahoma lacked jurisdiction. Congress, his lawyer, Ian Gershengorn said, never properly terminated the reservation. 1907, mind you. During oral arguments in May, the justices reached back to 1907 to determine whether Congress, using imprecise language, failed to disestablish the 1866 boundaries of the reservation. If so, virtually half of Oklahoma, home to 1.8 million residents and including Tulsa, where Donald Trump recently held a controversial campaign rally amid a global pandemic, would remain subject to federal criminal laws. Well, if you live in Tulsa, you may be frantically panicking now, wishing you attended that rally. And I'm sure 1.8 million people are voting for Trump come November. What are they going to do? Are you going to vote for Joe Biden and agree that where you live? Listen, man, if I was born in 1986, I don't know anything about what happened in 1907. You mean to tell me that if you were born in 1986 in in Tulsa, they're now like, oh, that that, you know, that house you had when you're a kid. Nah, (laughs) it's a different country now. It's an it's that's the Muskegee Nation under federal jurisdiction. Mind you, I have to imagine this is there's going to be revolt, political revolt. Here's what they say. If so, virtually half of Oklahoma, home to 1.8 million residents, including Tulsa, would uh, uh, they, yeah, 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 would remain subject to federal criminal laws only, I suppose. Quote, we do not pretend to foretell the future, and we proceed well aware of the potential for cost and conflict around jurisdictional boundaries, especially ones that have gone unappreciated for so long, Gorsuch wrote. But it is unclear why pessimism should rule the day. With the passage of time, Oklahoma and its tribes have proven they can work successfully together as partners. The federal government promised the Muskegee Creek Nation a reservation in perpetuity, Gorsuch wrote, adding that while Congress has diminished the sanctuary over time, lawmakers had never withdrawn the promised reservation. As a result, many of the arguments before us today follow a sadly familiar pattern. Yes, promises were made, but the price of keeping them has become too great. So now we should just cast a blind eye. We reject that thinking. Wow. Chief Justice John Roberts, in a dissenting opinion, said that Congress made no attempt to conceal its intention to to disestablish reservation lands. The court suggests that Congress sought to tiptoe to the edge of disestablishment. Quite the opposite. Through an open and concerted effort, Congress did what it set out to do, transform a reservation into a state. He's right. I'm not a lawyer, but as far as I can tell, Oklahoma is a state <laughs> like it's not a secret that, that this is these are the boundaries of the state. It's been a state for a long time. They have senators. They have members of Congress in these areas. What happens? I ask you now, what happens? I don't know to the members of Congress who represent the Tulsa area. Are they going to carve that out and be like, Oklahoma, you just lost some electoral votes. I have no idea. It's federal jurisdiction now, right? So, no, they'll still have their electoral votes. But mind you. I, I, I'm not an expert on, on, on Native American territory, so you'll need to look this up. But one of the big concerns about Washington, D.C. is that as a, a territory under federal jurisdiction, they, are, they, they do not have representation in Congress, which is states, right? If this territory is now no longer under Oklahoma jurisdiction, it's under federal jurisdiction, do they lose their congressional representation? They'll retain their electoral votes, but do they lose congressional representation? Perhaps. And what if the senator... Senators live there. Man, you got to move. Sorry. 
let's say, uh, uh, they say the state's solicitor general, Mithin Mansinghani, had warned in May that a ruling for Native Americans could require the release of more than 1,700 inmates. That didn't sit well with several justices who feared a chaotic overhaul of long decided criminal cases. What makes this case hard is that there have been hundreds, hundreds of prosecutions, some very heinous offenses of the state law. On your view, they would all become undone, Associate Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg told Gershengorn. Won't residents be surprised to learn that they are living on a reservation and that they are now subject to laws imposed by a body that is not accountable to them in any way? Samuel Alito asked. Now, let me ask you something. Oklahoma, you're probably going to vote red, I'd imagine. You're going to give your electoral votes to Donald J. Trump. What if you live in a swing state? Let me just remind you that if you live in, say, Michigan, oh, this is going to get juicy. I'm sorry. Your whole state is Native American territory. If California, California is too. I mean, this is going to be weird. Uh, What do you think is going to happen when these blue states, New York, for instance, when they vote in someone like Joe Biden, who appoints more leftist Supreme Court nominee, you know, uh, justices who then agree the the territory belongs to Native Americans. You in your somewhat red state will now lose your territory because of blue states who don't care. This will be interesting. I I don't I don't exactly know what the ramifications will be. But as 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 we've we've read, at least from USA Today, the ruling means they fall under federal jurisdiction, not state jurisdiction. They say in last year's case, The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit ruled the state lacked jurisdiction to prosecute a gruesome murder because it happened within three million acres belonging to the Muskegee Nation. The ruling threatened more than 19 million acres in eastern Oklahoma, once inhabited by five Native American tribes. Within hours of Thursday's ruling, the state and uh, and five Native American nations released a statement promising cooperation. The nations and the state are committed to implementing a framework of shared jurisdiction that will preserve sovereign interests and rights to self-government while affirming jurisdictional understandings, procedures, laws, and regulations that support public safety, our economy, and private property rights, they said. We will continue our work confident that we can accomplish more together than any of us could alone. So for now, it seems that you, as new uh, residents of a sovereign nation under federal jurisdiction, I don't know how this works, to be honest, you're no longer residents of Oklahoma, I guess, but they're going to uphold things as they are. Well, for how long, though? And to what end? Now that they've been granted all this infrastructure, like Tulsa, for instance, wouldn't they want to collect taxes on their behalf and not the, not behalf of Oklahoma? Why wouldn't they now use this ruling to say, I'm sorry, all of the you know property taxes from Tulsa will go to us, not the state? I don't know. I don't. We'll see how things play out. But as I mentioned, Ted Cruz ain't taking it lightly. Neil Gorsuch and the four liberal justices just gave away half of Oklahoma, literally. Manhattan is next. To which Brett Chapman, who is a Native American attorney, has said, you can't give that which you stole. And yes, other places are next. So perhaps I wonder what places are next. Well, first, let me show you this here map from the Oklahoman. And this is a, this is an older story where they talked about This is from uh, last year, last June. They talked about the potential ruling here. Now, what we're seeing on this map is the territory that has been ceded. You can see it. The the, the orange eastern half is now under Native American jurisdiction. That's a lot of people, isn't it? I don't know. If you're from Tulsa, comment below. Let me know what you think. Well, I got a bigger map here. This is Indian land areas judicially established in 1978 and American Indian reservations. This is not necessarily the right map we would need to use because you could argue that, you know, the original colonies or certain territories did properly or didn't properly. Here's the point. You see all of these areas here on this map? For those that are listening, it's, 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 it's the United States, and it's got the Native American territories over much of the country. How many of these jurisdictions, of these territories, of these reservations were granted but then the treaties were violated. I would argue that a lot of them are. Now, one of the big fears presented in this uh, uh, in the story from USA Today was that it's going to negatively affect many other states who have the same uh, same uh, situations. Check this out. They say last year, 10 states from Maine to Texas to Montana warned the boundaries of tribal lands have jurisdictional consequences there as well. 
They said a decision in the tribe's favor, quote, would be confusing and costly at best and disastrous at worst, affecting health and energy policy, environmental regulation, economic, economic development and taxes. Why that's right. Now, those of us over here on the East Coast seem to be fine because that territory was take was, was conquered hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But since the establishment of these United States, there has been westward expansion. Throughout that westward expansion, the United States has conquered, yes, conquered territory that belonged to Native Americans. Since then, we have considered the overwhelming, you know, from sea to shining sea, this country is an American country. Within it, there are Native American reservations. They are under federal jurisdiction. And there are a lot of problems. I actually investigated this a bit for, uh, for Vice. We we're going to do a big story on the crimes that get committed in these territories and how the federal government doesn't actually do anything. They just ignore it because they're like, hey, that's Native American. We don't care. Look at this map. So we can see here in Oklahoma, the eastern half, like I pointed out. Well, there you go. They got that back. What about over here? What about these boundaries? What about the entirety of California? And yes, in response to this, we're seeing on Twitter people saying, now do San Francisco. Why? I got to be honest with, 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 with you. It seems to be the case that while we did grant treaties to Native American tribes to give them land throughout the westward expansion throughout the 1800s, we kind of just trampled all over those treaties. Now, I don't respect, I, 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 I have no uh, respect for what, you know, uh, our ancestors did. Well, I shouldn't necessarily say mine because I'm fairly certain my family wasn't even here. But uh, uh, previous Americans did a thing. Okay, here's my issue. Are we going to go back to every single country everywhere or at least just in the U.S. and say we're breaking apart the U.S.? All right, well, there you go. You can see what that means. The original 13 colonies, the eastern region will collapse into all that's left of the U.S. Or actually something else might happen. Under the existing rulings, federal government has jurisdiction. If we revert all of these territories back to the Native Americans, they will still exist under federal jurisdiction. The only thing that I can see happening, I, I guess, if, if, this, if we're going to go to the most extreme direction possible, Congress, as we know it, would be reshaped, would, 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 re, would reform in many different ways. We would dramatically lose uh, members of Congress, like the, the amount of people we have. Senators, for instance, we'd have substantially less senators. And the country would become a federal one, a federal country. If this starts getting worse and chaos breaks out, civil unrest, fight over jurisdiction, then I, I could honestly imagine Donald Trump invoking National Security Presidential Directive 51, where he will overrule a Supreme Court, dissolve our government as it exists and create a new constitutional government. Look into, look into Directive 51. We now run the risk based on the collection of taxes. Who represents this area to Congress, if anyone at all? In which case, this precedent risks breaking us apart. It does. Now, I don't know. Maybe it becomes nothing, but I really don't see it becoming nothing. I don't because taxes will immediately be an issue. Oklahoma's budget is going to be just devastated. And there are areas of Oklahoma that rely on tax revenue from Tulsa. Maybe they don't have a right to it anymore. And the power granted to the Native American tribes, they're going to start expanding and building. They're going to start using that, uh, those resources of Tulsa, perhaps for more lawsuits, which perhaps they will win under this precedent. Or maybe come November, this is the moment when Americans start freaking out and they sweep every layer of government with Republicans saying, please don't let our country fall apart or not. Or maybe the country falls apart. I don't know at this point. This just happened. Y'all laughed at me when I said things were getting crazy. No, nah, I'm kidding. Yeah, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. I'll tell you what. Well, there's more. Don't don't worry. These great United States may stand strong or maybe not. Have you heard of the Breathe Act? Yeah, I covered it a couple days ago. Squad members are proposing a wide ranging bill that slashes police funds, give reparations and would allow non-citizens to vote in state and local elections. Well, there you go. It's coming. It's happening. Yeah, you know. And what does Nancy Pelosi say? Oh, she doesn't care about the statues being torn down. People will do what they do, she says. Are, are you kidding me? People broke the law when they tore the statute. I don't care if it was what the ideology was. They broke the law. Nancy Pelosi doesn't care. I don't know what to tell you, man. Donald Trump is leaning heavy into the culture war for his reelection. 
And according to Politico, his aides worry the world has changed. It's not going to work anymore. Talk about the economy, they say. I don't know, man. The Supreme Court just gave away half of Oklahoma. That's not an exaggeration to say. I can't believe it's real life. 2020 is the craziest year ever. Did you know there's a story going around about them finding sharks in a volcano? (laughs) We had murder hornets, volcano sharks, Oklahoma's split in half. Can't say life is boring, I guess. So maybe the culture war is the right thing to talk talk about. What's going to happen when this news breaks and Americans start asking the question, will my city, will my state be next? Will I wake up one day in a foreign country? Will my values be completely displaced by a group of people who are, have, have no, are, are not accountable to me? And think about this. While the federal government does maintain jurisdiction over the eastern half, half of Oklahoma, what happens if tribal leaders form their own police who enforce their own laws on the residents of Tulsa? Who's going to stop them? Now, now, they will have rights under the Constitution. But what? Their jurisdiction, they can do what they want, right? They can legalize gambling. I guess a lot of people will be happy about that. Maybe, maybe this becomes a good thing. Maybe the Native Americans embrace a more libertarian philosophy and it becomes a bastion of real, you know, economic growth and development because people can go there and they're protected under the federal government, but they'll have, you know, these state laws being repealed. I have, I honestly, I, I have no idea. But I do believe that Trump may be right about leaning into the culture war. Trump can come up at his next rally and say, I can't believe it, but the Supreme Court has ruled that the eastern half of Oklahoma is no longer under the jurisdiction of the state and is now under the jurisdiction of the Native Americans. You need to understand what they're saying, that if you are in Tulsa and you commit a crime, the state can't enforce anything against you. Perhaps uh, the, the local government can to put you in jail or something. The state can't. So you could commit a crime and say Oklahoma City, flee to Tulsa, and then you're outside their jurisdiction. The feds would have to come in at that point. And maybe they won't. Or maybe the, the new Tulsa government. So, or so the Native Americans are going to cooperate as it stands now. But I, don't be surprised if in the next couple of years, they start demanding tax revenue. They start forming their own national uh, police forces and laws and regulations. And you know what? Hey, more power to them. You know why? It's, it's what you get with, with the Supreme Court. If Donald Trump doesn't win and Joe Biden gets in and he's potentially going to fill two Supreme Court seats, then don't be surprised. And I, I know it might sound silly, but it, I just showed you the story. This happened. Don't be surprised if in 2021 under Joe Biden, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and, you know, I can't remember who else, some other people retire and some uh, far left or liberal justices are appointed. I shouldn't even say liberal. And they start ruling no, all these other Native Americans deserve their land back too. And the states start fracturing and dissolving. Maybe there's a net positive that the country just becomes a federal country and there's no more Congress or something. I don't know. Maybe there's a positive in there somewhere. I have no idea. I don't think it's fair to say that our country as we, as we know it is, um, I think the country as we knew it 10 years ago is already gone. You take a look at the ideologies that's bubbling up. You take a look at the factional violence. You take a look at now the Supreme Court ruling. You take a look at what they're doing in New York. They're painting Black Lives Matter, morality policing. I hate crime for you if you paint over it, but it's permitted if you want to paint it. You can you can dance on a highway and no one will arrest you. And uh, if you get into an accident, they'll charge you with a crime and put you in prison. I think we could. I'm sorry, man. I'm not saying this is the end, but I do think that the country is breaking apart in many different ways. And if you think the track we're on does not get worse. I'm sorry, you are wrong. Something must be done to reverse reverse course immediately. And I think one of the most important things is an an overhaul of Section 230 to restore speech rights on social media platforms so that people can start speaking up and pushing back against this. I'll tell you what, though, if if there are if I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man, it is not an exaggeration to say that this may be the most important election of our lives. I believe that with Nancy Pelosi saying she doesn't care about statues being torn down, the Democrats will do nothing to preserve the union. Yeah, I mean, it's really that dire, isn't it? I don't know, man. I, 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 I can't believe this. I can't believe this story. I just can't believe it. Something must be wrong. Ted Cruz said it. They gave away half of Oklahoma. So what comes next? Under a blue wave, Joe Biden presidency. He's too weak. He'll appoint 
you know, liberal Supreme Courts, leftists, I should say. I should stop saying liberal. It's not fair. And then uh, what do you get? Fracturing of the states, factional violence, an increase in crime, a defunding of police. I mean, all of these things are happening. How many grains of sand until you have a heap? They just gave jurisdiction of Oklahoma, half of it, to Native Americans. They're literally disbanding the police department in Minneapolis. This ideology is sweeping all of our major corporations. People are being canceled and banned. Speech is being shut down. What more do you need for me to say, hey, this is getting crazy, huh? Civil war? I don't know. What more do you need? I guess we'll, we'll, we'll just see what happens come November. I think if there was ever anything to light a fire under people, this story would be it because it seems almost unreal, like it's not really happening. Yeah, we'll find out. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastnews. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.